Farm for Profit Podcast. Take a listen, have a blast. Farm for Profit Podcast. Learn about farming while having a laugh. Farm for Profit Podcast. Hey listeners, it's time for a What's Working in Ag segment, and we are doing this one based upon your questions. We love it when you reach out to us and want to know more about a topic. We've now talked with Terraplex twice on two full shows, but now we're going to spend just a couple of minutes with Owen Jenks. Owen is the field operations manager, and we're going to talk more what it's like to have that drone in the field and what exactly we need to do about that. Welcome to the podcast, Owen. Thanks, Tanner. It's good to be on. And we are a little bit ahead of schedule for when this show comes out, but congratulations. Recent graduate of the Iowa State University, best school in the Midwest, best school in the country. I'd like to say it's the best ag school that we have in the country. So There you go. Go clones. So we're going to focus today on the custom application side of Terraplex. Yep. But before we get into that, I want to know why you have or how you have the experience that you have having just graduated from Iowa State. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. So I grew up on a grain farm in western Illinois. And so kind of growing up there, um, when the drones first started coming out, that's something that I guess I expressed an interest in as well as my dad. And so we went out that first year and we purchased, it was a DJI MG1P. Um, my dad purchased that for the farm. And so we went out and did some acres, some of our own acres with that. And so that was a two and a half gallon tank to put that in perspective. We've got up to 13 and a half gallon mm-hmm. tanks on our biggest drone now. So we, we went from about doing 60 acres a day to our drones can now do 50 acres an hour. Well, that's, that's adding productivity. It, it definitely is. So from there, I enjoyed it. So I went out and I purchased my own spray drone and started an own spray drone business. So I ran that for two years. And then I had sold that last year and went to work for a land investment fund for a year. And the drone industry just drew me back. So I met the guys there at Terraplex and have kind of been working part-time for them ever since. So, How old were you when you bought your first drone? So the one I purchased, I'd have been ni- yeah, 19, but I was 18 when I first started running them. So it would have been after my senior year in high school that summer is when I first started running drones. So I've, I've been around the drones for a while, even for my age. So. so do you think that's the trend, though, on the drone side connected to agriculture? Is it a lot of younger individuals starting to adapt this technology? So I think we're getting a mix of both. We've got a lot of younger individuals coming in, but we've got some older ones as well. Um, Whether it be they're the ones signing the check or they really like the technology, but maybe they've got a son that they want to come and run it. Um, But it is a really good way for younger people to get back into ag. Um, It's an avenue there that is very accessible and it's a relatively low capital cost to get in while when compared to other things too. Sure. Yeah, we've exchanged a lot of stories on this podcast about how individuals come back to the farm and what Mm -hmm. gets added, whether it's a hog confinement, which is a lot more capital intensive, or it's adding a custom business, and this is one of those types of avenues. So having just graduated, you've got your role at Terraplex. So what are you responsible for at Terraplex? So my role is our field operations manager there, and so I'm responsible for our custom application. So a lot of that takes place with communicating with our pilots where they need to go for the day. Um, a lot of that's, I guess, done on the back end, communicating with farmers and co-ops on how that scheduling looks. Um, right now we're booking a lot of acres out and kind of building some processes and procedures for our pilots to go through that'll just make it smooth and efficient to go. Um, we're big fans of the crawl, walk, run principle, so we've got a little, some small jobs here we're trying to do so that we can get efficient in what we're doing um, in and kind of just revamp that before we send all of our pilots out to do it. So. I want to get to the pilot part here in a little bit, yep. but you mentioned before we got on the mics that you're headed from here to go spray some wheat for yep. fungicide, and then you've got a couple of herbicide jobs, but where do you see the most demand for your drones being? What type of application? So I think a lot of it is going to stay with what we've typically seen aerial applications. So that's going to be your corn and soybean fungicide. Um, that's kind of our bread and butter of our business. Um, We do see kind of some growing demand in cover crops. A lot of that is dependent on government programs and how how all that works out for a lot of guys. Um, Just because there's some pretty big payments that are potentially out there, but we're kind of still trying to see how that all works out. So if somebody wants you or Terraplex to come custom apply, 
how do they book that service? Yep, so they'll go to terraplexconnect.com or they can contact one of our location managers. Um, if they've got even more questions, they are f free to call me. Um, my cell phone number is 309-297-1580. So they can go ahead and call me there at that number, and I can answer any questions that they've got about custom app. Now, how do they know that they may need to employ the use of a drone? What are some common instances to where it makes sense to reach out to you guys? Yeah, so, I mean, really any field that a plane or helicopter do, we can do. Um, especially when you get into areas, though, where you've got a tree line, you're around houses. We feel that we're able to better cover those areas than a plane or a helicopter. Now, we still cannot guarantee that we'll be able to get 100% of those fields because as someone that runs a corner soybean planter myself, I like to plant under trees sometimes. <laughs> I don't know why uh, farmers do it. But we do. Nothing grows there. Drones and trees do not get along very yes. well. So that's why I say we can we can do most of your field because we've got to stay back a little ways from that. And really, you wouldn't be growing anything there anyways. But. Yeah, that's a good point. I was driving down the road uh, to go work on the field cultivator and couldn't figure out why one of the fields looked like it had a real bad weed issue. Mm -hmm. And I ended up looking to the opposite side of the road to see that there was some rye spread for cover crops. And yeah. I can only assume that that was done by plane. And I it was a drift right. factor. And it's, a, it's amazing when you see these drones operate. They'll come up to that last two or three rows there on your end rows, stop, move over and keep going um, and you're you're getting spray in all those end rows even though it, it stopped right there it's pretty cool to see the the vortex that it puts down and really the amount of downforce that comes off those drones i mean you're getting coverage from the bottom leaf top and bottom of it all the way up to the top one yeah whereas some other application methods have sometimes laid on top or not knocking the plane or the helicopter guys, but when those guys have to pull off to miss a uh, telephone pole, their spraying is a lot higher. Mm -hmm. um, those guys are uh, they're a lot more ballsy than I am. Uh -huh. I would be pulling up way sooner than they are, and it would be a terrible job. But that's why I'm flying a drone and not a plane. So, so. now let's get into what the listeners really came here to hear. <laughs> and this is about the piloting side of things. We've had so many questions about how do I get my pilot's license? Can I create a custom business? How do I weave myself into the fold of turning this hobby into a passion, into a business? So yep. let's first start out. What does it take to become a drone pilot? So yeah, you need your Part 107 license. Um, that's just through the FAA. So that is your license to be able to operate a drone for business use. So realistically, anybody, whether you're flying a little Mavic up to these big spray drones, you need your Part 107. So then in Iowa, you'll need to go get your state pesticide applicator's license, which is your 11F. And then from there, you need to go get a class 3 medical. So that's through the FAA, just kind of saying that you're fit to fly. That's interesting, right? Because you're controlling it. But from what I've understood during these last couple of episodes, how physically healthy do you really need to be? No, it, it's kind of something that we talk about internally. And it's like, I don't really understand why we need this because... These drones are operating autonomously. Um, we've got old guys that have been able to run them. Um, it, it really does not take much physically to run it. The most physical part is getting the drone in and out of the truck. Um, that, that's all it really comes down to because these fly completely autonomously. Um, it's sitting on the ground. You, you load it with cam switch batteries, and you'll slide a button on your phone or on your controller, depending on what brand you're using. And it'll take off, it'll go, and it's actually smart enough where it's able to optimize its route um, based on where you stopped last time. So it'll start with a full pass rather than deadheading down there to pick it back up. Oh, really? Yeah, so they're pretty smart. Well, exactly, and that's great to know. So we get our license. You said mm -hmm. that was the first part. Yep. And then we, we got to pick out the drone that fits what we expect to use it for. Yep. If we're going to use it on our own farm or if we're going to try and run a business, obviously we know Terraplex can help with that from past conversations. Yep, for sure. What if I buy one from my farm and I think I want to also do some custom work? Yeah, so a lot of your your licenses that you'll, you'll need are very similar. Um, you might just kind of want to change your insurance up a little bit on that. But that's something that our salespeople are able to help out guys with a lot. Um, one thing we do encourage is, especially if it's your first year flying, not to overbook acres. Um, 
most of us have been there before where we've been told by someone on how much it can do and then we we get out there and we realize our skill level is maybe a little different than um what an experienced person's is so you might not be able to cover as many acres as maybe the book says and our salesmen are really good at being able to set realistic expectations because most of us have run our own custom app businesses before and kind of been told one thing and, and ended up seeing another. So. One of our good friends of the podcast, Kelly Garrett, always says that he's the limiting factor on his farm. So you're probably not wrong. Yes. I get out there and if I've got the drone, I'm probably the limiting factor for the productivity I, rather than the machine itself. That That is 100% correct. Um, most of our crashes we see are pilot air. Um now, someone might not necessarily think it's pilot error, but usually at the end of the day it comes down to pilot error, whether they were way too close to something or a lot of guys trying to land on top of a trailer. Sometimes they're just off a little bit or weren't paying attention, thinking about something else, and ends up with a drone crashed off the side. So a lot of it is pilot error, and that's something that eventually it gets less and less just as people learn how to fly their drones more efficiently. And that makes a lot of sense to me. So... If we've got somebody that's interested in doing custom work, mm -hmm. can they reach out to Terraplex? Do you have a need for custom pilots? So we do a little bit. Um, so our goal this year is to cover over 100,000 acres. Wow. So most of that will be done by our pilots, but we, we will probably need a little bit of custom help. So whether that's through guys that we've already bought drones from or that have bought drones from us, or other individuals. So it's kind of a, a case by case basis as the kind of workload, um, as, as we figure out how the workload is going to be this uh, summer. So that's good. And I think I remember the team saying, if I don't know where to start, I can start with Terraplex and that sales team will help with the licensing process, will mm -hmm. help with the selection process and help with training. Yep. So we're kind of a full service business. So I'm mainly on the custom application side of things. But we've got a whole team dedicated to the licensing and training that needs to go into that. Our salespeople are very educated in, in all of that aspect as well. So they're able to set you up with the right drone. They know the right licenses that you need. And they're even able to help you on trailer setups if that's something you're looking for too. Oh, I forgot about the trailer setup. <laughs> that's right. I know that they can go to terraplexconnect.com in order to get that information. But I want to know now... What are you most excited for your first summer out of college, working a full-time job with Terraplex in this industry that's continuing to grow? So for me, I'm most excited to help farmers. Um, so growing up on a farm myself, um, I guess I, we've seen application jobs that um, have been done that necessarily aren't up to par. And I look on all the um, drone Facebook groups and you see guys that the application wasn't done right. Um, I guess I've I've applied them myself, so I know the the job that needs to be done right. And I don't. We're not necessarily looking for a one-time sale here on our custom app. We're looking for customers that come back year after year. So we're wanting to do that right for the customer. Um, if that costs us a little more money to do it right, that's okay. We're going to do it right. Um, we want that farmer's crop to be in the best shape that it can be. Well, that's good. You gave your cell phone number out earlier. Let's give it out one more time before we wrap up. So if anybody has questions, they can reach out to you. Yeah, that's three zero nine. 297-1580. And again, just call with any custom app questions that you have and uh, we can get those answered for you. All right. Well, again, congratulations on the recent graduation. Good luck this summer and I hope you have a lot of fun doing it. Thank you.